I have some information that will surprise you. For the past 15 years, scientists have been using cutting-edge technology to investigate your family history. We've been delving into your distant past, and we've discovered something incredible. It's time we shared it with you. A long time ago, your family were on the brink of dying out. Yet somehow, against impossible odds, they managed not only to survive, but to become the most successful people on the planet. Come with me, and I'll tell you something that'll change your view of the world. It's the story of your family and how they conquered the Earth. What if I told you that scientists have discovered a time machine, a portal that has allowed us to see back into ancient history? And what if I told you that for the past 10 years, I've been using this time machine to gather information that has been rewriting history, your history? And where does this information come from? Blood. It's one of the world's most evocative substances. To many people, it represents the essence of life, a religious sacrament, a gift from the gods. But to me, it embodies the past. Because inside this tiny crimson drop is the greatest history book ever written. It's the story of a journey, the journey of our species, and each of us is carrying a unique chapter. But it's only in the last decade that we've discovered how to read these stories, a window on the past that archaeologists could only dream of, a time machine hidden in our genes. My name's Spencer Wells, and I'm a geneticist. The adventure began for me as a young researcher when I was lucky enough to work with a special man. I've tracked him down here in Venice. His name is Luca Cavalli Sforza. Luca was the first man to realize that blood could be the time machine to reunite us with our ancestors. Evolution is history. Biological evolution is a genetic phenomenon. So unless we look at the genetics, we don't understand our history. We don't understand why we are made the way we are made. This is how it started. In science, every now and then a big new idea comes along. It happened back in the 50s. What if we could use blood to learn about our most distant ancestors? The question became an obsession for Luca. He gathered up blood samples from populations around the planet. Why? To build a family tree for the whole world. We saw that we could reconstruct a tree for these populations. We didn't know what it was supposed to be, but it made some kind of sense. Luca had made the first steps toward a monumental truth that everyone alive today might be related, but his results were still hazy. It's the 1970s, and Luca's out in Central Africa sampling the blood of the Biaka and Mbuti people. He had a hunch that isolated tribes could give him a clearer picture of our distant past. He was right. They could. It really was possible to work out distant family lines from blood type, and the key lay in the blood of isolated populations. Flash forward to the early 90s. I was lucky enough to be one of a chosen few working with Luca at Stanford University in California. There was a scientific revolution in full swing, and the buzzword was genetics. While everyone else was talking about the future, 
we were looking backwards into the past. Blood was the time machine, and we were time travelers. Soon, we were taking Luca's work onto a new level. Ten years on, and we're ready to rewrite history. There are now some six billion people spread across our planet. Not so long ago, our species numbered little more than 10,000, and their world was a single continent, Africa. Then something happened. A small band left their African homeland on a journey into an unknown, hostile world. You are one of their children. Who were these people? How did their children come to populate the entire Earth? I'll explain more about how we know this a little later. We are desperately close to the answers. We're on the verge of understanding the greatest journey in the history of our species. And yet... Listen, I'll be honest with you. I've got a problem. I've spent nearly 10 years checking and double-checking the details of this journey until I have complete and total faith in our results. And the upshot? A story that's, well, frankly, it's impossible. If our ancestors made the journey I believe they did, they would have had to be superhumans. The speed, strength, and resilience required to conquer the world defies belief. And yet, there it is, written in our blood. What do you do when 10 years worth of work leaves you with more questions than answers? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I made a decision. I'm closing the door in the lab, hanging up my white coat, and heading out into the real world. I'm gonna retrace their journey for myself. But my task is daunting. I know the genetic results, they're supported by clear data, and yet I still find it amazing that only 50,000 years ago, the ancestors of all of us were still living in Africa. It seems like such a short period of time on an evolutionary timescale. Look at it this way. Humans evolved from apes, and apes first appear in the fossil record about 23 million years ago, a huge expanse of time. So compress it down to a year. In that case, apes appear on the 1st of January. Toward the end of October, the first ape men arrive, the first ancestors to walk upright. Amazingly, it's not until the 28th of December, nearly the end of the year, that the first fully modern humans arrive on the scene. And even more incredibly, it's not until the 31st of December, New Year's Eve, that they leave Africa to populate the rest of the world. And by New Year's Day, our ancestors had made it to the furthest corners of the globe. But how could they have made such a journey so suddenly, so swiftly, and so successfully? That's what I'm off to find out. It hasn't been an easy decision. I'm not just leaving my cozy lab. I'll be leaving behind my young family, too. But this is a big story and I want to be able to tell it with absolute confidence. To do that, I've got to walk in the footsteps of our ancestors, to face hardships, to feel the elements that so nearly wiped them from the face of the earth. It's a journey that both terrifies and exhilarates me. First stop, the place where it all began, the birthplace of 